For those of you who want to learn more about the text tool, here it is. I'm just going to zoom in by clicking and dragging the zoom tool over the area I want to look at and then go back to the move tool and double click on my text box. Now when the text box is selected I can go to the corner of the text box and change the shape. to get it exactly how I'd like it. Now with the text tool itself I can change my font in a similar way to what you would in Microsoft Word. Your fonts are listed, then you've got your font styles. Photoshop Elements doesn't force your font to have a bold or an italic style so if it's not included in the font you won't be able to apply it. But with Minion Pro I've got all of my different options. I can change the font size. I like to stick with about 14 points. I find that means that the text is still readable when I print it out. I usually print my layouts at 8x8 eight eight size. Next I've got anti-aliasing. The anti-aliasing makes the fonts look smoother. As I was saying, not all fonts come with bold, italic, underline, etc. But these two text options allow me to force the text to look bolder. So we'll try it with this font. This is my handwriting font and it doesn't have all the set the font formatting that a more professional font may have. So this adds a faux bold. You can have a faux italic which just sort of warps my text a little. We've got an underline. We've got a strike through. For a handwriting font like this, I think the photo bold may be useful, especially if there's not too much contrast between the text and the background it's sitting on. Then we have our alignment tools. We can left, center, or right align text. You can also justify text using Control shift j but it's not um, an easy to get to option in Photoshop Elements. So we'll just go back to left align here. The next option is the letting, which is the space from the baseline of one line of text to the next. If I scrub over this icon here, I adjust the letting. In digital scrapbooking, I find this quite helpful if I want to have text on a journaling card that's lined or something similar. Most of the time, however, need to make sure it's set to auto. If you have any strange problems with your fonts looking like they're not quite right, that's the first thing to check. Just check that you haven't accidentally messed up your letting. Then we have our colours options for our text. You can select part of your background paper or photograph for your colour of your text by clicking on more colours and then just selecting the part of the photo or the paper that you want to use. As you can see, each time I click on the background here, it changes the colour. I can actually zoom out using Control Zero and then choose any colour from my whole layout. But I'm happy with the brown, so I'll click Cancel to get out of it. You'll also see that there's a number of extra colours here in addition to your standard colours. These are just colours you've used recently. Now our next two options are creating warped text and changing the text orientation. So with the warp text, you can change your text into a number of different shapes.
These can be a fun effect, but I'll be honest and say I don't use them very much in my own scrapbooking. But you might find a use for them. The next option is changing the orientation of your text. I'll just zoom in so I can show you that one. Select the text and then change the orientation. Now the text is going from right down the page. Add your text and journal about something meaningful in the photos, etc. And then finally, you've got your apply or commit button and your cancel button. That allows you to cancel everything we've just done. So if you're happy with your edits, click the green tick and there you have it. Text edited. Would you like to see more Photoshop Elements video tutorials? Visit digitalscrapbookinghq.com for more tips, tutorials and free online workshops.